Hey CLC, I'm Danny Tuxhorn and I'm the youth pastor here at Transfer Student Ministries. This week would have been a week full of celebrations and ceremonies for our graduating seniors, but right now life looks a little bit different. But today we wanted to take a moment and congratulate all of our graduating seniors. We are so proud of you and we love you so much. There is something we want you to do though. In order to honor all of you individually, we want you to go to the CLC website and fill out the form for graduating seniors. We love you, we're so proud of you, and right now what we wanna do is we want to welcome one of our graduating seniors, Jordan Leak, who's going to pray over all of you. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan. Uh, I'm a graduating senior from Fayetteville High School this year. Um, I wanted to pray over my graduating 2020 senior class. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, above all, we thank you. Thank you for the opportunities that you've blessed us with throughout this entire schooling career. Um, it ended very unconventionally, but God, the 2020 class was never normal. So we thank you for everything that you've blessed us with. And to my graduating classmates, it's time to celebrate now. Although it doesn't look like normal, it's time to celebrate because we did it. Um, I'm so proud of all of us, everyone from transfer and everyone who's graduated in general this year. So Father, we thank you so much for your, your countless blessings that you've bestowed upon all of our lives and help us remember that going forward, we are still living in your name, even though we won't be at transfer, that we are still working to further your kingdom and that all of this is because of you and for you. It's in your name we pray, amen. Hey everybody, I'm Talia. Thank you for joining us for our online experience this weekend. Our service will start in just a few minutes. Before we go any further, here are just a few reminders. If you consider yourself new to the CLC family or just want to find out more about the church, text Hello CLC to 94090. Our website offers an opportunity for us to partner with you in prayer. If there is anything that we can pray with you about, it would be our privilege to do so. You'll find an online option for giving. It is an easy way to continue giving safely and securely, and you can set it up for recurring giving as well. For all of the CLC kids, Pastor Tony and Pastor Lori are updating content for you each week and updates on those respective CLC Kids Facebook pages. As a quick reminder, we are continuing to abide by the guidelines given by our local and national officials of maintaining social distancing and limiting any gatherings to no more than 10 people. We will continue to monitor all the information released by our government officials and keep you informed of how that affects CLC. Currently, we are planning on having our first service back in the sanctuary June 7th. Our cathedral chapel will be staffed with the pastor from 10 to 2, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, for you or your family to stop in for prayer. Feel free to engage with us in the comments section, invite a friend to watch with you, or if you have a need or something we can pray with you about, let us know. If you prefer the comment-free edition, swipe right. Let's prepare our hearts and minds as we worship together. Friend of God, I am a friend of God. 
God Almighty, God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me there. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me there. God Almighty. verses 8 through 11 says come and see what the Lord has done the desolations he has brought on the earth he makes war cease to the ends of the earth he breaks the bow and shatters the spear he burns the shields with fire he says be still and know that I am God I will be exalted among the nations I will be exalted in the earth the Lord Almighty is with us the God of Jacob is our fortress, the word of the Lord. Yeah. Hey. 
are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reach hands to me. You are my strength. You are. I'm Sue Whiteley, and I want to talk to you today about the absolute joy there is in giving. Don't you think it is amazing that the God who created our world has given us the privilege of partnering with Him to build His church? Obviously, there are so many ways to be a part of God's wonderful plan, but for a minute or two, I want to talk to you about His financial plan for us personally and corporately. It is a plan of action that is foolproof if we choose to follow it. He spoke these words through Malachi. Bring your tithe into the storehouse and prove me. Just see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour blessings on you that you won't be able to contain. Simple meaning, 
Give me the first 10% of your finances and I will multiply that back to you where you will have enough for yourself and your family and can even give offerings back to me to help in many other ways, the poor, the needy, the hurting, so many different ways. But the key to this, the first 10%, the tithe, is to be brought into the storehouse, the local church body who is feeding you spiritually. That is the key to unlocking God's abundance for you and your family. It's a beautiful plan. God said, put my work first in your finances, and that multiplies back to you in so many ways. In the first chapter of Isaiah, we are told, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. There is a blessing and overflow in obedience to God. Plus, it's exciting to see what he will do through a willing, obedient person. Obedience is not a punishment, it's a joy. During this time of COVID-19, the challenge it is important to continue giving the tithe. There are several ways you can give. You can give online on our website. You can drop it off at the church or mail it in. We are so thankful for you and your faithfulness during this season. Now let me pray and bless this offering to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we want to offer you our praise and our thanksgiving for the blessings that you've given each of us. Lord, I ask you to open our hearts to understand more and more and more what it is to, to partner with you and all the things that you've called us to do on this earth. And then, Lord, one of these days, pretty soon, we will all be able to be with you around the throne. So I thank you today, and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And I know in these unusual circumstances that we are in, I've discovered a new understanding of what it means to uh, put my focus on Him in worship and not my surroundings. Uh, I've many times come into the house of the Lord, and I am encouraged to worship because you are a worshiping together with us. Well, uh, to discover and enjoy the personal worship experience alone with God during this time has been something very precious for me. And I pray for you, if you've not experienced that before, it'll be a time of discovery and a beautiful opportunity I believe we have to enter into his presence in a new way with an attitude of thanksgiving. I wanna share a portion of scripture with you and some thoughts this morning that, and I wanna title this message, While We Wait, While We Wait. Peter wrote to the church in 1 Peter and 2 Peter, and he makes several observations out of concern because of the attitude of many that was wavering because of a promise made, but they feel like the promise has not been kept. And the promise was that Jesus would return. And there was a lot of conflict about this. And as a result, a lot of adverse teaching about it. And so the apostle Peter attempts to calm things down and give us good instruction on how we're to conduct our life while we wait for the coming of the Lord. And this is as relevant today as it was in his day. So if you will, in 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, and I'm going to give a few verses and we'll skip around a little bit. I would encourage you to go to chapter 3 of 2 Peter and read this entire chapter for yourself. But let me begin at verse number 1. This is my second letter to you, dear friends. In both of them, I have tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. I want you to remember what the holy prophets said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come, mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? Now skip on down to verse number nine. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, 
He is being patient for your sake. I really like this. He's being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. Now look at verse 13. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth. He promised a world filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting, while you're waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are, that are pure and blameless in his sight. And remember, the Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. Is that not incredible? The Lord's patience that sometimes we are impatient with and we are, 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 are scoffing at <laughs> and even mocking the things pertaining to his coming. But the Lord's patient because he wants no one to perish, but everyone to have opportunity to repent. Everyone to have opportunity to be saved. Now my forecast for the future is this. In his relentless pursuit of us and his desire for all humanity to come to know him as Lord and Savior, I believe we're in for the, one of the greatest moves of God, a revival that is different than we have ever seen before. I don't think we can judge it by what has happened in the past, but I do believe there's going to be something miraculous that only God knows and he will reveal that a marvelous harvest of those who are lost without Christ will come to know Jesus. It will be without denominational ties. It will be without all the rhetoric that we have put people through in the church world. But it will be about the promise of his love, his forgiving grace, and his return. There's a revival coming. And I believe we're in the throes of it already. So be attentive, be aware, and remember the promise of God. They're yea and amen to them that believe. He is going to return. He is going to come again, just as he said. But while we are waiting, so let's talk about us. While we are waiting, I suggest that we commit ourselves to be a person of integrity. A person of integrity. Second Peter chapter 3, as we just read to you in verse 14, said, And so, dear friends, while you're waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. I like that. People need to be able to trust us. If the end result is we want them to come to know Christ as Lord and Savior, they need to be able to see us as a people of integrity. They need to say their character supports the witness that they are giving and the testimony that they are giving about the Christ-centered life. Integrity matters. Life-giving relationships are built on trust. So it's very important that while we are waiting, we do what we can to be found blameless. Oh, are we blameless? We all make mistakes. But to be embraced by his grace on a daily basis and be reassured with his mercy that is new every morning that we can continue on in this purpose-driven life that he has for us. It's a marvelous way to live. But don't let all of the disappointments get us down and sabotage our effort to live a life that is pleasing as unto the Lord. We make a mistake, we get up. And with his grace, we dust ourselves off and we thank him for his embrace and we move on in the name of Jesus. I want to see that happen in lives around me. I'm really skeptical of the person would say, well, that's not me. I never make mistakes. I'm not one of those that has problems in any category. No, I just kind of tune that one out. But he is looking for a people who are attempting to be blameless in his presence while we are waiting for the promise to be revealed. Integrity does matter. Trust that has been violated, I believe, can be restored. So every one of us can be a candidate for what we are speaking of here, of working on a life of integrity. So God's grace enables us to walk honorably with God and with man. Second thing I want to say to us is this. While we are waiting Commit to be a person who forgives freely. 
Be a forgiver. Jesus forgave so we could be forgiven. He instructs us to forgive freely as he has freely forgiven us. It's very important for us to even remember that Jesus himself, while he was yet betrayed, he still chose to forgive. It is all through that passion that we see and his death and even after his resurrection, he continues to forgive and the message goes forth, we are to forgive. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 says, work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life for those who are not holy will, see, will not see the Lord. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you and corrupting many. Unforgiveness is a poisonous root that will trouble many and it can destroy our lives. It is something that not only affects us, but it's a generational thing. And I think it's very important that we understand how poisonous it is when we choose not to forgive. I know, I know, but pastor, you don't know where I've been hurt, how I've been hurt. You don't know the, the extenuating circumstances. Can I say it really doesn't make any difference at all. They got it all wrong and they crucified Jesus, but he forgave them. He said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Even when people don't know what's going on and, and, and all the assumptions are wrong, we still need to walk in forgiveness because we are the one that is freed when we choose to forgive. If a person receives the forgiveness we offer or not. So let me say, forgiveness is the road to freedom. Forgiveness is the road to freedom. And then while we're waiting, I want us to commit to be encouragers. Romans chapter 14 says, so then let us aim for harmony in the church and try to build each other up. You see, people often live up to the expectations that are placed on them and they need encouragement from those who have overcome and those who are purposing to walk as unto the Lord. Focus on what they're doing right and what's good and positive and help people rather than putting down, let's build one another up. So while we're waiting for the coming of the Lord, let us encourage one another. Let us encourage one another. And then the last thing I want to say is this. While we are waiting for the coming of the Lord, while we are waiting, commit to be a peacemaker. Oh, this is important especially in the day we live today where there's so much injustice going on in our world and the racial tensions and the hate that is in our world today is a product of the spirit of antichrist that is among us. Oh, we need to be peacemakers in the house of the Lord and let it touch a world that needs Christ. Uh, Ephesians chapter four, verse three says, make every effort to keep yourself united in the spirit, binding yourselves together in peace. Praise God. Peacemakers speak up in a life-giving fashion and we work toward reducing the conflict that is influencing so many people's life. And can I just say, refuse to participate in the negative. Refuse to participate in the gossip. Refuse to participate in, in, in everybody trying to figure things out that we cannot figure out, but that just frustrates everyone. You have to tune it out in order to walk in peace and to be able to promote peace. I, I want you to hear this in closing. This is really important. I know I've said that twice now in closing, but this is important. Hope guides our lives. Peace guards our lives and love endures through our lifetime. It's important for us to hope to have peace and to let the love of Christ and the love we have for one another permeate the atmosphere, change things all around us. So while we wait, I'm anxious for the coming of the Lord, to be quite honest with you. 
But until he comes, until he comes, I want to do everything I can to walk blameless before him. But if I stumble, I ask forgiveness and he's gracious enough to do that. And I want to be a forgiver. I want to walk positive before the Lord. And I don't want to hold grudges and let the bitterness of unforgiveness go to the very root in my life and destroy the joy that he has for me. And I want to be an encourager to everyone to say, you can be a peacemaker. You can walk in peace. You can live in peace. My challenge to you is while you are waiting for the coming of the Lord, give your life so completely to him and watch what happens. Be encouraged today. Be encouraged today. Things are going to be changing in the next few weeks, but as they are right now, while we are waiting, Let's sing the song of the redeemed and the joy of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your grace embrace us. Let your love that sustains us be so real to us that we see it is hope in you that is guiding us. And it is the peace of God that's guarding our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for being a part of today's service. Stay connected with us and let us know how we can serve you. We will see you here next week. Let me close us in prayer. Dear Lord, I come to you today thanking you for this fellowship that we have received. I ask that you watch over our families, our fans, our entire community throughout this upcoming week. I ask that you just place peace in our hearts and a smile on our face as we continue through these tough times. In your name I pray, amen. Y'all have a good day.